she started her life as a high school English teacher. She studied law, and then in May 2007, she became the state coroner of New South Wales. So it is my pleasure to welcome Mary Jerram to the studio. Welcome, Thank Mary. Um, do you do the washing up before you go to bed? <coughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Usually, um, I must say, I'm very glad when I have. Yeah, you, you talked about in your, your talk, you, I mean, obviously, it was, it's been a few months since you stepped away from the role as the state coroner. Um, uh, what were your big plans, I suppose, post doing that? And I'm trying really hard not to say the word retired, That's because I know you it. hate it. What were um, your big plans? I, I'm writing. Who isn't when they stop working? <laughs> But I have actually, uh, I'm going to meet some publishers next week and it's not going to be a boring memoirs of cases I have known. It's going to be more fictional and I hope a bit more light-hearted. And, and why is that after your career, and particularly in your talk today where you were talking about justice and vengeance, to follow on something that is light-hearted? Why, why is that good for you? Well, you need the reaction. Actually, when I was... At, coroner's court and there were five of us who were full time and I think there was quite often and it was never at the families or the dead person but we used to have a horrible lot of black humour and I think it was the only way to get through things. And sometimes I used to have to say shush because people were laughing you think what that must be like for families out there and we weren't ever laughing at them. Mm. But you just needed to blow off steam. It is so important no matter what career you're in, mm. I imagine. Mm. I know you've already talked about this, but obviously on stage in your TEDx talk, but for you, why was it so important to, to make those comparisons, to talk so specifically about vengeance and justice and the differences? You mean apart from the fact that Edwina gave me that title and said I had to oh, speak yeah. to it? <laughs> good. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. But it is a good topic. It's an interesting one to go well, on. Well, when she and I first talked about my doing the talk and that came up as a proposal, I immediately seized on it because I do think it's very interesting and I don't blame anyone for it, but I think in our hearts, everybody, especially in those first times of serious grief, really do want vengeance and we call it justice but I don't think any of us are completely free of that because most of us are rational and sensible you get over it and that was one of the points I was trying to make but I think it's pretty normal to feel that but we cloak it in the term justice. Certainly. Mary Jerram, of course, is our guest, and there is a, a question from one of you in the audience, and I believe that Lucy Carter is on the microphone. Mary is um, inspiring talk today. Thank um, you. And the theme of um, blame and vengeance, um, it seems that the media and the politicians have a bit of a feeding frenzy whenever we have some, some event and they're, they're out to seek um, something, to, they need someone to blame, they need some vengeance to be extracted, and the politicians are immediately going to things like mandatory sentencing. How do we take... <laughs> How do we inject some of your thought and intellect into that debate and trying to break that cycle from the, the, the political process? I really do think that we have to read a bit more widely. And when I made that comment about not just taking the views of the popular press, I think that's vital. Because really, the, the sum of the popular press really does give a very one-sided picture of things and so people inevitably, if that's all they're listening to or watching, people inevitably think that that's the only opinion to hold. So I think we have to encourage people to read a bit more, to think for themselves, and for those things to be debated, probably. Um, Mary Jerome, we're asking everybody here today in the studio what their greatest lesson is worth sharing. and. I'm kind of curious to know what your lesson worth sharing is now that we've seen, you know, doing the dishes before bed obviously <laughs> isn't your high point. <laughs> so what is your greatest lesson worth sharing, Mary Jerram? I've said it before and I stick to this, <laughs> that girls can do anything, but you have to keep a sense of humour. Hear, hear. Is that fair enough? Absolutely. <laughs> I 100% support that. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please thank Mary Jerram.